Okay, let's cut some 2D contours and chamfer some edges. Some of this should start to feel familiar, so I'm gonna cover this journey more briefly. We're gonna start to trust that you've got some of the answers, that you're working with a buddy and you can work together to come up with some of the answers, that you've got help nearby for when you've got questions, and that I'm gonna fill in the rest right here. The critical detail about this phase of the journey is that as you develop confidence at the mill, it becomes actually riskier because you start making bigger decisions. So please keep the notion in mind that we're trying to go slow and keep you safe and keep the equipment functioning without a crash. Great, let's see if the tools we need, tool 1 and tool 12, are actually in the mill. We'll start with tool 1, MDI T1 ATC forward to call it up. And look at that, the spindle is empty because the tool is over here on the rack. So go ahead and load the tool and measure the tool. If you're the one who put a tool into the spindle, measure it immediately after putting it in the spindle. Always measure it. This prevents crashes due to height offset errors. Now let's check tool 12. MDI T12 ATC forward. This tool should get drawn up right out of the octagon and it should be the chamfer tool. I say should because we've got a standard library of tools that are posted on the Makerspace website. The word standard in standard library means those tools should never change. And if for some reason something else comes out of the octagon, please let me know those tools should never change. Then go ahead and measure it, even though it's standard and should never change. Measure it anyway so that you're not trusting that it's been lurking in the octagon in a healthy status for who knows how long. Then load your work in progress onto parallels in the vise. You should be seeing the word front at the front, and you should be seeing your clean machined surface with the dot in the middle on top. Seat your work in progress onto the parallels with a plastic mallet to increase your perpendicularity between the top and the sides that you're about to cut. Then torque the vise to an appropriate amount of foot-pounds. And here, appropriate means the number that you've arrived at based on your experimenting with how too much torque can end up crushing your material. Then probe the top, left, and back of your material. Then find your personal work coordinate system. For me, it's G154P80. And write down your coordinates for X, Y, and Z. Then look at your G-code and confirm that you're actually using that same work coordinate system, and here I am, G154P80. Then grab the ruler out of the tool cart and confirm with your Z-min value, which is negative 0.64, that you have room to descend negative 0.64 before crashing into the top of the vise. Then return all tools that you can to their storage spaces and look around and confirm that your workspace is neat and tidy before proceeding. Slow the rapid movements of the mill down to 5% and slow the feed rate of the mill down to 10% so that you have a couple seconds to react as you push the feed hold button. Then call up the first tool in your program, which in our case is T1. Open up your laptop with Fusion nearby and re-familiarize yourself with the simulation so that you know what's going to happen first. Then push cycle start and keep your finger over the feed hold button and push it many times. Creep down, check in with fusion, check in with your position, your Z value, your distance to go Z value, and your Z value in your program coordinates. Stop the coolant whenever you want to see a bit better where you're at. Stop the coolant and stop the spindle so that you can open the door whenever you want to lean in and really see where you're at. Always be asking, am I ready to take the next step? Do I feel comfortable where I'm at and where I'm going? And if your answer is no, reach out and ask for help. It's okay to stop at any time. If all goes well, you should end up with all four sides of your cube contoured. And if things are going really well, you should be able to get your chamfer tool down into position without too much hassle. And if things are going great, you should end up with a part that has a clean machined top, beautifully contoured sides, and a chamfer that lays 10 thou onto all four top edges. Great. Take it out, look at it, touch it, notice everything you can notice, like this vertical line right here where my tool entered and exited the tool path. Look at it under the microscope. Examine 
the chamfers, the tooling marks, everything that you can see, even the little scratches from when I carried around this part for a week before picking up with this next step. And take a moment to celebrate where you've gotten to. It really is challenging to get all these details just right. So congrats on getting this far. Next up, we're gonna flip it over and machine operation two.